Hello and welcome to True Sound Studios. This will be a fairly in-depth tour of just the control room here at my home studio. So this is the full view of the studio. Right off the bat, we have the entryway to the studio, one of two entrances. This is a 36 inch solid core door filled with sand. This normally has an acoustic panel on it, but it's off right now. And of course we have a very, very good multiple security systems here and surveillance. When bands are entering or exiting and they're hanging around the door, this is where I keep information about the studio and other things that we do here at the studio. It's a great spot to have extra information hanging around. Off to the side here we have a couch and a bulletin board and this bulletin board is for bands to post information about upcoming shows or gear or looking for members. So first up we have a Tascam 1 inch 16 channel reel to reel tape machine and this guy is fully functioning. I generally use this for bands or for myself who are very experienced in the recording process and understand that there is little to no editing with tape. This is also great for bands who are not looking for a really produced sound and are looking for an authentic recording. And this also gives a different sound and there's no analog to digital conversion until unfortunately it has to be put onto a CD. And here's the rack gear that we use for the tape machine. Unfortunately, you can't just use plugins for tape. So this is the mixing console that I use as an Allen and Heath GL4000. There are 44 line inputs, 40 mic inputs, 30 outputs, including all the buses and aux sends. We use the buses to send to the four different pairs of speakers. The aux sends are, are used for headphone mixes or to send to the tape machines or whatever a session may call for. There are 40 direct outputs on here, four band sweepable EQs, low cut, pad, 48 volt phantom power per channel, including all buses and 10 aux sends per channel. This is a very flexible board, and it's been modified with some LEDs. On top, we have two computer monitors, and these monitors are for the main recording computer. And I use Sonar X1. I'm a non-Mac, non-Pro Tools guy. I grew up using Cakewalk products, and I still continue to use them today. There's no point turning back now. My main recording speakers are ST6 KRK. On top we have some JVC computer speakers and flying above us are custom built four-way speakers with Yamaha tweeters in them. And right off to the side of me are some laptop speakers. So between these four pairs of speakers you can really get a great idea of how your music is going to sound before it leaves the studio. Also, on the outside of the studio, there is a aux cable that you can plug into your car and actually listen to the mix before I go ahead and mix it down and master it. So this really helps out with clients being happy in the end. Controlling the DAW from inside is a Mackie Universal Control Pro. And it's fully automated with flying faders, eight channels plus a master and you can use it for bus sends or track volumes and or whatever the project calls for. It's a really great control surface. This computer monitor that's right above it, along with this one, run the second computer. We have two computers, both are quad core with 16 gigs of RAM, nine terabytes of total storage, 11 hard drives, and these are clones of each other, so in case a computer goes down during a recording session, in about 15 minutes I can switch everything over. And then we have some extra computer accessories on top. The small patch bay 
that's right there is for the guitar cabs that are in the other room. And I can patch in these seven different guitar cabs to the two different speaker outputs from the back of the amps and create a big wide range of guitar tones very quickly. On the back side here, here is all the rack gear. This is where the analog meets the digital or vice versa. So to start off, we have an M&M vintage mixer and I've added transformers to seven of the channels. It's got a really interesting EQ on it and we'll use it to kind of create some maybe not so pleasant drum or guitar tones. Um, it's more like a fun sounding mixer. Um, on top we have a Fender tuner. Right below that is a Sonic Maximizer, the BBE-462, and I use that on the way in or through effects loops on the guitar amps. Right below that is a Soundcraft EQ, and that's the same thing. We'll run that through the effects loops and cut out some of that 16K or just use it as a secondary EQ. Then we have a Roller Exciter that I use on bass a lot. Then we have the Sonic Maximizer, the 362, and I use that for synths or pianos on the way in to kind of spice up the sound a little bit. And then we got the Antares Auto-Tune I'll use for pitch correction when we use the tape machine so that you can have some sort of pitch correction on the tape. And up top we have the SSL Alpha preamps with the VHD drive on them. And then below that, we have seven different types of compressors, all DBX. And I mainly use these compressors to control some of the levels before it hits the converters. So I'll use them on vocals or bass, acoustic guitar, and also they're used on the tape machine since you can't use plugins. The main converters and interface for the studio are SSL Alpha Link converters. These are the Burr Brown converters, very well known, very high end converters. And through Maddie, I have a Maddie PCI Express card that sits inside the computer. And this is what transmits the audio in and out of the computer and to the converters. Below that is the Apogee Big Ben Master Time Clock. And that clocks both the Alpha Link and the PCI Express card. Below that, we have a Motu 828 MK2, and I use this a lot for mobile recordings. And below that is a EQ for the four-way speakers and a power conditioner. And below here, we have a Line 6 tone port. Up top, we have a Korg Micro Korg. That is the control surface for most of my soft synths. A uh, MIDI pad for programming drums or whatever else. Next to that is a Lexicon unit for MIDI. And here we have a quarter inch tape machine. And sometimes we'll use this as tape delay or dump masters on it. And behind here, this is the production desk. This production desk is where up to three clients can sit with their laptops or keyboards or synths. But this is the client view and they get to sit right behind the mix field, get a great stereo image and there are inputs and outputs for keys, for headphones, for guitar, so that people can really be a part of the recording process. And it's great when we're doing licensing or co-writing or producing and trying to get everyone's input on a track and really helps everyone get a say in the recording process. Underneath the mixing console we have some amplifiers. Uh, up top we have an amplifier for the laptop speakers, a, another sonic maximizer, a power conditioner, a Yuri frequency dividing network for the dual 8 inch 400 watt subs an EQ and a couple receivers that drive some of the other speakers. On the side over here, we have a microwave, a coffee maker. The two cases on the bottom are humidified controlled cases for the tape. We have an air conditioner, another couch, 
And we also have a mini fridge and a dog bed for my dog that is usually in the studio. She's not on here right now. On the wall, we have eight guitar hangers, and this helps keep all the guitars off the floor or leaning up against things and helps prevent some damage for the guitars. Here's just a phone booth, a little something fun. Also up top here, we have records and full-length CDs of some of the bands that I record. These are a bit older, but anything that we spend a lot of time on, I try to hang up in the studio. And here's a security camera. So this wall here is the dividing wall between the control room and the vocal booth, the guitar booth, and the drum room. This wall is triple insulated. It's double thick. It's two walls with an air gap in between. And this is what truly isolates you from the noise. The main reason I was making this video is to talk about what we did with soundproofing the studio. The difference between soundproofing and acoustic dampening. So this entire studio has floating floors, floating walls, and floating ceilings. The floor, because it's concrete underneath, and it's a garage, it's about a three car garage, had a slanted concrete floor. So first we had to build it up and level it. And back there it starts, it drops about four inches and all the way down to where the garage door is on this end is about almost eight inches down. So we were kind of forced also to do a floating floor. And we did it all with two by fours and three quarter inch plywood. And as you can tell, as I'm jumping up and down here, there's no squeaking of the floor which is huge because it's a wood floor and it can squeak. So then we next take you to the walls, a very big spot for leakage of sound. So the walls on the very outside is decorative half inch plywood with green glue in between, sandwiched on top of another half inch of plywood. That is nailed through half inch foam core board into the studs that support the structure. All the cavities then are filled with spray foam and then covered with half inch drywall. Then we put green glue on that drywall, put a second set of studs on a second sheet of drywall and then green glued and stuck that up. And what this left us is a drywall with studs on the outside that we filled with acoustic insulation and covered it with black fabric and this black fabric is what you see here. And then we ran these green strips around the studio so that when you, if you were to lean into the wall, that you don't actually fall into the wall because there is almost a six inch gap. And this creates an acoustic panel wall all the way around the entire studio. This is what helps create an incredible mix environment and really allows you to truly hear what's coming out of the speakers. Also in the back corners is 10 inch thick bass traps to absorb all the low end frequencies that are in the studio. The ceiling is the exact same thing as we did with the walls, except we didn't add the second sheet of drywall. And what we did was we put a foam core board up with an aluminum back on it it also makes a cool ceiling and is great for lighting when it comes to video and we do some small video production here. So thank you once again for watching. Please feel free to leave comments or even email me with further questions. And in the next video we will take a look at the vocal booth, the guitar isolation booth, and the drum room. Thank you.